Hey, Skyler here from the Mint Change You Can Wear. Today in this video, I want to show how to make a Morgan Dollar coin ring. With all the new tools that have come out recently, it's uh, changed the way I've made Morgan Dollars a little bit. Also, make sure to check out my website, changeyoucanwear.net, to see my classes available and also coin rings for sale. All right, guys, let's get to it. So the very first thing we need to talk about is hole size. Generally, I only punch two size holes in a Morgan Dollar coin ring. Uh, one is a 5 8 inch hole, which is this one is and the other one would be a three-quarter inch hole. So anything nine and a half and lower would get a three-quarter inch hole just to make a thinner band to make an appropriate sized ring. And then the five-eighths inch hole is the target uh, band width I like to use for anything ten and larger. So once you get your size figured out, get your hole punch, which we have here, uh, we will get it annealed, which I've already done with this one as well. If you want to know the best way to uh, get your hole in your coin ring. I got a ton of videos you can look on my YouTube channel. But right now we're going to start by just coning this thing out. And what I love to use for getting the cone shape in your coin ring, this one ton arbor press you get from Harbor Freight. It's a little cheaper than a six ton A-frame press. Not a lot, but it's just really quick and easy to use. You could also use a six ton A-frame press also. You can also just get away with using a ring stretcher of some kind. You just need to use a different type of cone is all. And for the classes I teach, I have all three options on every station. Each one has a definite use, and they're really beneficial if you can have all three. And the first die we're going to use is Jason's Works 1.5 by 1.6 17 degree die. This is what we're going to use for our first press. And we're going to want a tail side out coin ring, so make sure the tail side is facing down. And what we're using for the pressing is this universal folding cone that I get from Jason's Works. It's the stainless steel folding cone and we're going to wrap it with two layers of Teflon tape all the way down. It's just going to protect the detail of the coin ring on the inside. Okay, once you have it pretty much even, go ahead and press it. And then we'll stop right there. And on our first pressing, this is as far as I like to go. Now we're going to re-anneal it and then finish it off. And like I say in every video, annealing a coin ring and then quenching it in water does not harden it. If it was a steel or a ferrous metal, it would harden it, but since copper and silver are non-ferrous metals, it doesn't affect them like that. We get it to a dull red, like that, and then we'll quench it. After the folding and then the annealing process, I like to re-sand this cut edge just to make sure we're not having any splits starting. And if you see them, make sure you file them and get rid of them. Everything looks nice, smooth, and unsplit. So now we're back to folding again. Now we're going to fold it all the way till it's almost all the way closed up on this folding mandrel before we switch to a new die. And right before I just stop. You can see it's nearly closed up now, um, but we're running out of room inside this die, so we need to switch to a smaller die, which is going to be Jason's 1.3 by 1.4 17 degree die, and that'll finish up the folding process. All right, that's it. Now it's all closed up on the mandrel. Time to re-anneal. Now we have it at this stage, it's time to start talking about ring size. So for what we're trying to do is we're making sure this coin edge side is going to get opened up towards touching the ring stretcher at all points. And we want it to do that two and a half to three sizes larger than our target ring size in order to get rid of the cone shape that we have. If we were to stretch this thing out on the ring stretcher right now it would be, you know, like an 18 and a half. So if we were trying to make a size 16 and a half, we would just stretch it straight out. But since I'm trying to shoot for a target size of 12, I need a Swedish wrap it to get this reeded edge down to a size 14 and a half. I know it sounds a bit confusing, but basically all you want to make sure to do is that this closes up on the ring mandrel when we're stretching it at a size 14 and a half if you want to do a 12. Say you want to do a size 13, two and a half sizes larger would be 15 and a half. And if you want to do a size 10, it's got to be a 12 and a half. So two and a half sizes larger is what I always do. So I'm shooting for a size 12, so I'm going to Swedish wrap it. I'm not going to show all the details of Swedish wrapping. It'll just be a quick overview. But if you want to see all the details of how to Swedish wrap, I'll put a link in my description box below for that video. Now 
So we're sitting almost at a size 14 and a half. I'm just going to throw in the stretcher just to stretch out that last quarter size. And then we will re-anneal it and then start re sizing this thing. So now we're on to sizing. And this is where it can get a little confusing again for people. So we're, hit, we're wanting to hit a size 12 when this ring is all finished. That means we're going to have to size it down past a 12 by two sizes for a Morgan dollar coin ring. The reason being is the reeded edge, the uh, coin edge up here, is very, very thick. And when you curl it into a ring, it actually gets kind of sharp on the inside, where there's a lot of excess material inside there. When we get this made to a completed ring, we will take a deburring tool like this one and remove two sizes worth of material out of the inside of that ring. In order to hit a size 12, we need to bring it down to a size 10. And the first step of that is using, for this case, we need the 1.1 by 1.2 17 degree Jason's Works die for that. And I like to put a little Pepe lube on the uh, edge we're sizing just to make things move a little smoother. We're going to use a 6 ton A-frame press for sizing and the reason being is it's just it's a lot more power for one because we're using such a thick coin and it's a lot easier to control very small movements so we can get exactly at the size we want to without overdoing it. And then I like to use a little coin anvil to make sure you get a nice even press going down. In this initial pressing I don't want to go straight to a size 10. I actually want to go to a size 12 or 11 and a half and then we'll finish it up in a different die. Alright, so we're right at a size 11 and a half, exactly where we want to be. And so once we are here, I like to go away from the 17 degree die. Um, I want a nice curved edge. And in order to do that, you can use one of Jason's 25 degree dies or a doming block. I personally like to use a doming block, it gives a nice curved edge. The 25 degree die does as well, but I just like the slight difference that the doming block gives me. The doming block that I use is a 2 inch doming block from Pepe Tools. You can use a 2 inch or a 2 and a half inch. Um, they both work great. So what we want to do is find the appropriate hole size. This one is this one right here. It fits just about right. And we'll curl it down to a size 10. Alright, we're just a little bit under a size 10. That will work out just fine. We can go with that. So now we're going to take this cut edge, put it in the doming block, and then match that curve. Okay, so you can see we've got that curve shape that I really like. You're just checking to make sure that curve looks even to you. If it's not perfectly even, get it back in the doming block until it does look that way. And now what we need to do is get our deburring tool and start deburring that, that inside to bring it up to a size 12. So I've just started deburring and you can see that there's a good sized lip in there still. You don't want to see any sharp edge or any elevation change inside that ring. It needs to be nice, smooth, and rounded. So we'll keep deburring until it is a lot more rounded and smooth. And then we'll finish up with a little sandpaper just to smooth it out. And hopefully it'll be right about a size 12. Alright, so we've finished the deburring. And it's sitting right at the size 12. And the inside of that ring there's no more elevation change and it's nice and smoothed out. Now the next step is to antique it and polish it out. And I will put a video in the description box below for that process as well. So if you wanted to make it smaller than a size 12, Swedish wrap it farther down. And like I said, I'll put that video in the description box. And if you want it to be larger, you can use the Mega Stretcher and I will also put a link to that video. Alright guys, hopefully you found a part of this helpful, and as always guys, thank you for watching.